Fueled by DeathCast. You mentioned to me when we first spoke, actually, that um, the Zero G Coffee Cup now, you've got a patent for it, correct? Yeah, actually, we've got two patents. And and a, a partner in crime with me on this is a fellow by the name of Mark Weislogel from Portland State University. And he and a bunch of his students uh, took the initial design, which was this was actually invented on orbit and and it's patented. And this is the first example of something that was invented on orbit that led to a patent. Everything else has been invented on Earth, built on Earth and flown in space and subsequently patented. This is the opposite. This this was thought of and invented in space for use in space and then subsequently patented. Wow. Do you think maybe that you wouldn't have been able to invent something like that on Earth because of you just you just weren't able to test it correctly? You know, I, I think there's a lot of mindset of uh, from place utility of being there because uh, you you have a lot of our experiments. These are experiments designed by people on the ground, professors, very smart people, but they've never been in space and they can only uh, conceptualize and look at the mathematical equations and say, okay, if G goes to zero, what happens to this effect through the math of, of Maddox of the uh, equation that describes the phenomenon? Being there, you see and feel and experience things differently and you can can uh, make observations that somebody would never have, have thought about making. And, and so making a cup like this, if, if, if I were to try to write a proposal to say, hey, I want to make an open container cup, I'm not exactly sure I'm going to design it, but I'm going to, you know, give me a bunch of money and, and let me do the research, I'd probably be laughed out of the room. But because I was there and I could, I was able to make this cup. Now, working with Mark Weislogel, he and his students oh, wow. developed the second generation cup. And, and here, this is a 3D printed version ah. of, of the cup. And, uh, and th this, cup, this cup has a very unusual shape. It's, it's defined through the mathematics of fluid physics applied in weightlessness, where, where this cup was just used by intuition and knowing a few design equations and making sure that the angle was correct. This cup its shape, its form, its figure is strictly defined by the mathematics of fluid physics. Wow. And it has, uh, there was no artistic, there was no artistic uh, design in this. This was simply from uh, math and fluid physics. But you have this amazing artistic object. Yeah, so cool. And and those are currently on the space station today? Yeah, we have these on space station now. That's now, so cool. Not to be outdone, I took this, and in my garage, uh, I used to uh, do slip casting of porcelain. My mother taught me how to do that. So I slip cast wow. these wow. cups now out of porcelain, and and I even got to put the NASA logo on it. That is and then gorgeous. I have a real cool logo inside. It's a, It's a... Big zero with a little G inside of it uh, for G. That is and so cool. So, I got, so so now I can I can I can make these cups, and and they're made out of porcelain, and we have to be careful with these on orbit. They have to be covered with kept on tape and kept in a in a bag just because they're they're fragile and they could um, they could they could make sharp shards floating around. You don't want that. So the the 3D laser uh, uh, printed plastic coffee cups are, are, are the standard use. To first order, this is just a coffee cup. But Mark Weislogel, working with NASA, is coming up with a different version of this cup. And here it is. What? It's so so tiny. we're making, this is not a nano demitage cup, but what we're doing is we're making cups that only hold a milliliter, maybe even a half a milliliter, and we can 3D print these things in an array block with maybe 250 to 300 of these cups all put together in an array. And now for, for genomics 
and other biological processes that we are doing experimenting on station. These processes require an open kind of test tube environment where you have micro pipettes and you're pipetting fluid from one uh, uh, microtubule into another microtubule. And we found that the hemispherical profile can complicate things. And when you have the fluid profile in a little nano demitage uh, particularly if you're using a machine, you have a block of like 250 of these and you've got some pipetting, uh, micro pipetting machine that's just going between these different uh, cells and, and removing 20 microliters from one cell going over and putting 20 microliters in another cell. And, and how do you do that with a standard cylindrical kind of container? And we're finding that the shape of this coffee cup uh, can augment these kinds of scientific investigations on space station. Wow. So that's going to actually like help different experiments get that much better because you have that ability now. Yeah, because you have the ability to pipette small quantities. And we're, we're talking microliters, like 20 to 200 microliters of reagents from one sample into another sample. And then you got to remove another hundred microliters and take that and put it into another container and then then uh, you bake it or you shake it or you do something with it and 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 the shape of this container is going to aid in doing the transfer of these microliter quantities in real tiny they'll look just like these little coffee cups but they'll, they'll be like a half a milliliter coffee cup and you'll have a block of 150, 250, 300 of them all in, in one kind of block. You can just sit there and pipette stuff. Or you could set up a robot. We don't have the robot yet, but you could set up a robot so it would robotically be pipetting, uh, pipetting things in a microgravity environment. So, so that's the next wave for application for this uh, coffee cup design. That's 